Costa, uh, CU 2014-2, Charles Coward and Robbie Attaway. Mr. Martin. Yes, sir. This is a conditional use request for property in the NFP zoning district. Um, they are proposing to subdivide out approximately three acres from a 28 acre parcel. Uh, in your packet, it on the maps on the screen. Uh, we see the subject property because it sort of seems the apparent parcel that surrounds it. Um, this whole area is zoned in two um, in terms of aerial. In the industrial area for quite a bit of time. There's a residential neighborhood to the south. Um, the conditional use request is not a change in zone. It is simply to approve a specific type of use in, in two. Thank you. Um, and as we talked about in the work session, there's somewhat of an irregularity in the current use table for the city. Uh, recycling centers are defined specifically. Um, it is not a junkyard, it is not something with outdoor storage. Um, a lot of times we have junkyards that claim to be a recycling center. Um, this is actually one that meets the definition. Uh, they're proposing to conduct a facility entirely indoors, which they are required to do. Um, in your packet, there's a site plan here at the end. They're proposing a 7,500 square foot building, um, a small truck parking area of maneuvering. All of the materials would be inside. This is household recyclable materials only. Um, they are one of the contract callers for Valdosta that pick up the city's curbside recycling. This will be a building where it is brought and um, sorted and then taken away. Um, N2 is the most intensive zoning district the city offers. Um, all of the heavy manufacturing, some very, very intensive uses are allowed here by right. And it is ironic that something that is in staff's view nowhere near as intensive as junkyards and other things, um, and it's a use by conditional use only. Um, for example, the junkyard that is on the property to the east is a permitted use, and if one wanted to locate on this property, they could proceed and locate one here without a public hearing. It is because of the M2 zone. So we are going through the conditional use process for this use uh, because it's a current requirement. And as we talk about at the work session, staff is proposing to make this, among many other changes, to the use table. Um, in your packet is the definition of recycling center to describe exactly what it is and is not. And there's also some supplemental standards that the applicant will, of course, have to abide by. Staff is recommending approval of this after finding it consistent with the conference plan. This is an industrial care area. And we're proposing approval with uh, four conditions. The first one, conditional use approval shall be granted for an indoor recycling center facility only in accordance with the LDR supplemental standards for such use and in general accordance with the submitted site plan. All sorting and other business activities shall be conducted entirely within buildings on the subject property, and these shall not cumulatively exceed 10,000 square feet. There shall be no outside storage of materials whatsoever. On the site plan, you see the 7,500 square foot building. There is a small office building also being proposed, and so we're putting an upward cap of 10,000 square feet for the whole property. Number two. Recyclable material shall be limited to household and light commercial items only and shall exclude scrap metal vehicles or other heavy materials. Number three, all exterior parking and truck maneuvering areas shall be set back at least 15 feet from the brick property line and at least 60 feet from the residential zone properties to the south. Number four, conditional use approval shall expire after two years if no building permits for this facility have been requested by that date. And just to clarify something with the site plan, the subject property is a portion of a 22 acres that are zoned in two. The subject property portion does not extend, and repeat that does not extend all the way back to the residential area. It is simply within the 22 acres. You can see there is already a gap up here, but in the packet is a survey that shows a parcel. There is 30, 50 feet separation already in place. Um, the city's development code requires buffering between M2 and residential properties. The minimum buffer width is 50 feet. If you install a solid opaque fence, then you can reduce that buffer yard down to half. Um, this property does not touch <coughs> residential zoning, therefore it does not trigger buffer yard requirements, but you see where we put in here a separation requirement anyway. Um, if the property were to reconfigure, um, then other things may be triggered. They, since this is development from scratch, they do have to do landscaping around the perimeter anyway, as well as stormwater detention and so forth. 
But essentially, this is a warehouse type operation in a not too large of a building. Um, far less intensive than what M2 might normally allow. And hence our recommendation for approval. Glad to answer any questions you might have. Um, I want to clarify something. I, in that work session, you said it could trigger the DRI. Yes, sir. If you'll comment on that, I think you said we're going to move forward with it. Yes, sir. And we may probably want to put this in the record, Ms. Carmel. Um, staff did inquire officially about development of regional impact and actually went so far as to submit the form to the state. Um, staff has been told verbally by the regional planners that this does not trigger a development of regional impact. But I'm still waiting to hear that in writing. Um, and I will probably know very, very soon. And if so, we may be bringing this back to you in May. Um, but it has bearing on city council final action. It does not have bearing. Okay. All right. Any questions? Other questions? Yeah. Now, just for clarification, you said that uh, they, if the applicants have the contract that picks up the recycled bins of household. Right, and the applicants are here, I believe, and they can answer the details, but they deal with household recyclable materials, cans, bottles, newspaper, things of that nature. What about recyclable oil? Or that is not something that the city collects, and that's not something. Oh, it's just for the city. It's just the city. Also, the house code office. Okay. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Yeah. That's one more question. But in the hearing comment, it was uh, in both facilities actually at the same time, but there is no current, there is currently no set facilities uh, provided at that site. Correct. Has that, has that been addressed by the it, it's in the process of being addressed. Uh, that is a development issue that applies regardless of what gets built here, whether it's a recycling center or just a breaker warehouse. Um, city utilities would have to be brought from a distance unless some arrangement is made through the health department regarding well and septic. Um, that is a development issue regardless of what gets built. Um, we simply noted as background information here. Um, and you know, to bring water and sewer to this side and actually benefit some of the other properties. So that sort of broadens the discussion. Um, not just this property, but others around it. But again, that's, that's an issue regardless of what it's built. And if that cannot be resolved, then the development is not good forward. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? In favor? This request. Anyone wanting to speak in favor? Okay. I see that. Anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Come forward and state your name. One at a time. And address. My name is Susan Bradley. My address is 1951 Seminole Drive. Okay. As a homeowner in the Blueberry subdivision, I'm very concerned about the proposal to build a recycling center. I have no objections to recycling or recycling center. I just believe it would be more appropriately located in the industrial park. Some research showed me that generally there's an increased rate of crime in neighborhoods with recycling centers nearby. In 2011, a recycling center opened in a neighborhood on West Chicago Avenue. Area crime statistics showed over the following 18 months, robbery complaints jumped by 52%. In LA, area residents and business owners said a local recycling center has become a public nuisance because it attracted hordes of homeless people who are often scavengers and are engaging in illegal activity. Similar stories and statistics were found in Denver, San Jose, Jose Huntington Beach, and Atlanta. Increased crime, besides compromising public safety, caused costs the county and the city to incur increased costs due to the involvement of law enforcement agencies and the criminal justice centers and systems. There's also a negative economic impact to the neighborhood. Neighborhoods near recycling centers experience a loss in home values, 10 to 15 percent on the low end, in extreme cases up to 75 percent. Your home is your primary investment. A decrease in home value 
not only at the loss of the homeowner, but it's for the county as well, since our property taxes are based on our values. There's environmental impact from contaminated groundwater that we all have our own wells, to disease-carrying insects and rodents, not to mention the noise and smell, when the effect is far-reaching. A Valdosta resident, resident who works with cardboard recycling shared with me about the abundance of roaches, rats, and stray cats that cardboard recycling attracts. One recycling center struggled so, so with swarms of flies and they couldn't get rid of them. A very resident captured some of the flies, took them to be tested, and they were found to carry power. Health and safety is a huge concern. Study after study, the research clearly bears out there's an increased rate of disease in neighborhoods and new recycling centers. Green Law for Environmental Justice published, published a paper that cited various studies that linked higher rates of asthma, upper respiratory infections, bronchitis, skin eruptions, and ear infections to neighborhoods near recycling centers. Children are particularly at risk since they're still developing lungs for more vulnerable. Exposure to waste and waste-related pollution has also been correlated to a higher rate of cancer. And safety is an issue. Increased traffic flows and trucks. I mean, ours is a neighborhood where our kids drive around in golf carts. Uh, the, the area where the, uh, the, the recycling center would be placed and the traffic around it, that's also an area where the school bus picks up kids. We have tremendous concerns for the health and safety of our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Yes. Ma'am, yeah. come back up here. Come back. In the research you conducted, did you distinguish between sorting recycling facilities versus facilities that actually process the recycling itself? This but I understand, unless I'm mistaken, this facility is being proposed as a, as a sorting facility. So there's not going to be uh, heavy equipment or processes of the material that's being uh, recycled. So we are sorting that data and then transporting it elsewhere where they are actually going to be uh, processing the recycling. Um, whatever they do in their recycling, but is that the right way to that? So I'm curious to know some of this research that you've done, which has been very elaborate, and I appreciate that. If you, if you are able to distinguish between the different types of recycling facilities. Uh, also, my, I have a, the other question I have is that since you live in that in the neighborhood, south of that, uh, how does the junkyard uh, area there, the facility that's there, how does that impact your <coughs> over the years? <coughs> To answer your first question, honestly, no, I don't have everything broken down for, you know, one type of recycling center, a sorting only versus a processing one. Um, we didn't actually have a lot of knowledge about this ahead of time, so there wasn't a lot of time to do research and prepare. Uh, this is kind of an 11th hour thing when we all have to notice. Most of us did not get letters or other notification. Um, I would be glad to go back and, and research that some more to try and find that out. But certainly some of the ones that have sorting, there, there was a link in, in all cases with the crime rate because some of the ones <coughs> talked about the, the surrounding na neighborhoods, people would steal from those neighborhoods to take things to the recycling center to try and sell and get money for drugs or whatever it was, you know, they needed money for. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the if you're referring to the junkyard, the, the, the A1 towing, I do believe some of that impact is, yes, it has affected us. I know just recently we've had issues with homeless people living in the woods and it has involved law enforcement to get some of them moved on. I think even as recently as the end of last week, the Sheriff's Department was out looking for somebody in the woods in that area. Um, so yes, I do think that impact is already there and I would not want to see it increase. Can I ask your question? Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, yeah. 
if I can address this, her question is mad. Apparently there's nobody here to speak for one, but this is not a walk-up facility. It has not been proposed as such, um, but it could become that unless we include that in conditions. Um, but as you look at the map, the access to the site is strictly from west of the Abbey. No access through the neighborhood. Um, none would be allowed. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience like to speak in opposition? Forward, state your name and address. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Commission, uh, I'm Rick Williams. My family and I, well, my street address is 3331 Plantation Drive, Valdosta. And uh, my family and I have the uh, own the Holiday Inn Days Inn Super 8 uh, just in front of this uh, proposed site um, across the railroad tracks on Mill Avenue. And, uh, you know, we've been meeting, the, the neighborhood has had uh, has many concerns, and, and certainly I think you can kind of recognize that from the, the number of people in the audience that uh, there are a lot of concerns. And some of the concerns, you know, regarding uh, that, I, I don't think I'll do quite as great of a job as, as the previous speaker did, and not quite as eloquent as she was, but uh, I do work in about a few points. Uh, the storm water runoff. There's there's a lot of water on both sides, on on the rear and to the uh, east and west of uh, this property. And there's some real concerns about um, uh, the type of, of liquids that may be coming from the um, debris that may be uh, being packaged. And there's some real concerns that the neighbors have there. Uh, some of the the other items are the uh, noise concerns and uh, debris. The trash that's just uh, loose trash that may be running and um, from uh, through the parking lots or uh, the neighborhood from this operation. Uh, you know, one of the areas that's not real clear and uh, is the hours of operation that um, that really has a lot of people concerned because certainly, again, it being a lot of homes there, there's a lot of families and, and they are really concerned about noise throughout the night. Uh, and it needs to be uh, restricted to, to business type hours for uh, some reasonable measures um, <coughs> of that. Uh, the, one of the items that were listed is they say a six foot fence is being proposed. And uh, the, if in fact it is, it does go forward, uh, the, we would like to request a 10 foot fence instead of a six foot fence. Um, one of the areas, another area we have is the setback of six feet to rest of the There seems actually to be a small cloud um, on the, regarding the subject property, just to the rear of uh, where the, the wording M2 is, there's a, a small strip across there. Now, when our group has looked at the zoning um, flat of, of the city, it appears that that's a, actually R3. And the drawing shows that it's a, a C, as a, uh, as an M2, I don't know if you guys can kind of look at that a little closer, but in fact, if we were looking through this just earlier today, uh, it's coming up as uh, an R3 when we pulled it up on the website. That uh, is uh, 0.36 acres up there, so it's just right there on the fringe of the property. Are you referring to the separate small parcel that's on this cool. property in the neighborhood? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, R3 sounds like a tax assessor designation that has nothing to do with zoning. Um, that property is in the city limits and zoned M2. That was a separate area of land that has been sold from this property owner to that residential property owner to the south. Right. That residential property owner owns two areas of land, one in the county, one in the city. The one in the city is zoned M2. So it in fact is M2. Correct. The, uh, obviously, the neighborhood is concerned about the additional trucks and traffic that's going through their neighborhood. And, and, and I know it's been stated that uh, they're the pri primarily right now is the, the entryways onto Savannah Avenue. But we would definitely uh, want some restrictions in state that, uh, um, that cannot be accessed onto the residential neighborhood streets, as well as somehow try to limit uh, the, the usage of the residential neighborhood streets uh, from this facility. Uh, 
uh, regarding the enforcement of some of the conditions. Um, there are some conditions here which we you know, certainly appreciate. Uh, who will do the enforcement of, of these um, codes, the new codes that are being set forth to this? Well, the, this is just a conditional use review. This probably would still have to go through the full permitting review process and all of the conditions of approval uh, bearing on that, um, as well as business licensing, which would be the monitoring process going forward. <coughs> there, there's a lot more review and processes yet to go. Certainly. I would like to ask, um, actually just a show of concern, or a show of, uh, well, show of concern, if I may, may I, may I ask? Chair, the uh, for, uh, the audience members that are here that are that are, uh, that are concerned about what's taking place, may I ask them to say We're not supposed to, uh, so we, we can see that. Uh, people that know. Sorry. <laughs> <that are. laughs> right. They, uh, they're, they're, as you can tell, there's yeah. a, a, a large number of uh, right. neighbors that are concerned about uh, what's taking place here, and certainly we all, everyone respects uh, progress and, and understands. Progress is certainly one of the factors to try to reach progress. So, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for the speaker? Okay, thank you, sir. I want to allow one more person, if there's one more that would like to speak in opposition, to try not to repeat anything that either one has said, if you can bring up some new points, that would be good. My name is Bill Hubbard, I'm 2011 Woody Circle. I have a list. I have won a letter from one of the residents uh, who could not attend, I'd like to submit. And I also have a list of concessions that I would like to submit to be discussed. I have copies for all the board members. All of these we feel are within reason. A lot of these items are covered already in some of the proposals. A few things such as the gravel or the parking and staging area we do not feel is acceptable. <clears throat> and uh, one item I would like to would like to say is a reference on uh, the fact that there's a junkyard and a uh, metal recycling facility close by. According to the uh, land use regulation. It states on there that it can be no closer than 300 feet from properties on this residential use. For recycling center or for, for a junkyard? Okay. That's uh, HHA. And it also must be a minimum of five acres. So a this specific property being considered could not serve as a junkyard or recycling metal recycling as I understand. It could if it complies with all those requirements. That's correct. And it also requires an you know, eight foot fence. Now, one thing it requires an eight foot solid fence, the adjoining properties, including the towing facility for Sayre, those are not being enforced on those properties. So that's one of the reasons we are concerned that uh, so those uses will be enforced. And those uses existed long before these development regulations were adopted. That's correct which is another reason that we're not wanting, to, and also the regulations that are currently adopted, as I referred to in item number one, that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, actually, wrong one, I'm sorry. We'd like to also acknowledge that the land development regulation prior to, or as it exists today, the facility cannot be located adjacent to or across the street from any property used or zoned as residential use. That's the statute that exists now, and we do not want that changed. There's no proposal to change it. Exactly, but you have to request an exception for use, and this violates this why you have to get the exception. If I'm understanding correctly. May I address this, go ahead, Chairman. 
Um, they are well, it was for living, I'm sorry. I, I, I understand, <laughs> and it's, it's, I've been doing this for 25 years, and it becomes second nature, but most people have no idea. Um, what they're requesting is not a variance or any type of exception or anything. They must comply with all of those rules regarding these high centers, Correct. unless they go through a separate process requesting a variance, um, which they have not requested and they're not going through at this time. What they are requesting is conditional use approval for a recycling center in M2 zone. And that's all that's being requested. All the development standards, everything that we have in place for recycling centers, they have to follow. <coughs> Correct. And as far as being across the street or adjacent to a residential neighborhood, this property does not touch the residential neighborhood. It is not across the street from the mm -hmm. residential property. There is industrial property in between. That's a very fine line as to what is separating the industrial property from the residential. And I would like to ask the board members, would you approve this in your backyard? Yes. That's why we added some language in our conditions okay. to make sure there's some distance. Between. And that's our recommendation. This is all I have. Some of you have any questions? Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> we'll close the public participation and um, turn it back over to the commission for this condition. Bring it up and discuss it. Yeah, you can discuss it now. before the motion is made. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. conditional use yes and yeah, so all of the supplemental standards all of that would still be enforcing effect yes of all that but it never would have come before us it would have been correct it, it would have been, so um, which is the same as it. any other industrial mm -hmm. use allowed it into so got my opinion to put some I have a follow-up question mm -hmm. Commissioner Bailey inquiry about hours of operation. Is there anything governing hours of operation for this in existence now? I'm just curious. To, so, just like any use in the industrial park, there is no limiting hours there. They operate when they operate. So they can pick up during the day and sort during the night, and or, or not. It, it or not, whatever they choose to do. Okay, so I, I think that might be a legitimate condition that they. That I would be in favor of adding to this should we decide we want to pass it. it uh, and six foot is the uh, height from the fence that is required now. Well, they have to put a, a berm in front of their painting to put a fence across the sides and the rear. 
Um, the maximum height the city allows for fences is eight feet. And is that a chain link fence or, or a rope fence? I think they're planning on solid. And they're wanting to secure their property. They are, they are suggesting a six foot fence, and I think the request was 10, but eight is the maximum the city would allow. I, I, I'd be willing to give them the extra two feet and put some. I have to speak to that fence. Do you have any recommendations to get it? If you decide to go with this. Also, I noticed that this uh, is a little bit tougher for them about um, having another entrance to the backside subdivision area in the housing. It just shows the forest and primary uses. Is that all they can do in that area? They... That's all they can do without engineering approval, and city engineers not going to approve industrial access through residential area. They cannot shift this to the west to where the 22 acres parent parcel touches Boone Dairy. Um, condition number one precludes that. In other words, they're stuck with it basically like this in this location. Um, but as a safeguard, you could add that as a condition that says all vehicular access will be from West Savannah Avenue only. Mm -hmm. I agree it would be very helpful if somebody could have spoken in favor of this to give us some operating hours and uh, mm -hmm. some information about uh, their plans for controlling noise. I mean, I, mean, I understand, I, from what I understand, they're just going to be involved with recycling <coughs> materials that are picked up in the blue containers that are put by curbside for the city of Aldous. So that's is that the only business that will be involved in? Well, the city will collect the materials. They will collect it from the city and sort. And currently, they're operating from out of town. They're trying to get a facility that's local with the help of that. Um, but as I understand, that is all they're planning to do. So we're basically under our development standards, they can't really do much else beyond it. The only other thing that really fell into question is would this facility be open to the public? Mm -hmm. Based on what I've been told and what the site plan indicates, the answer is from their perspective, no, but there's no enforcement of that unless we make it a condition. So without that, you know, if they choose to be open to the public, members of the public could access it from West Savannah Avenue and bring in, a, you know, a few box loads of cans or something like that. So they, I think from their perspective, have a lot to deal with on their own. It's already organized. They don't want drop-in traffic. So basically what they're proposing is recycling things like the newspapers and vegetable cans, soup cans, uh, magazines, cans, bottles, bottles, plastic, glass bottles, plastic same, bottles. The, the, thing, the, the things that you put in the blue box by the curb. And, and that's it. So there wouldn't be any hazardous materials or hazardous substances being handled on the property. Correct. And noise would be limited. That's another thing, you know, if somebody were to speak in favor of this uh, application about, you know, will there be automated equipment handling cans that might be very noisy and, and what um, precautions might they take to make sure that the noise is contained within the building? When we talk about a building, is, is a building an enclosed, fully walled building with doors that will be kept closed during hours of operation <laughs> to limit noise and, and odor or whatever else may be present? Or would they be allowed to open under a shed with a three sides and one open wall? Or is that information available? In the way I remember from the discussions, there's two warehouse doors, one end and opposite end, where trucks will drive through the building, unload, and then drive out. Um, it's not a shed, but it's a building. Um, you could stipulate you know, the walls and for the building to close up. Um, hours of operation would eliminate the noise possibility at night or <coughs> outside hours. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be added on here, um, but you know, staff is trying to keep it in perspective as to where this is. Um, if this were a different zoning district, a different kind of use, we would have already proposed a lot more conditions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
finished on. Do you have any idea if they're going to include the county into this eventually, or is it just going to be for the city? I think their business partners with the city, and I don't know what their future plans are. If someone would have spoken in favor of this, so we could ask them a question. Okay. Any other um, discussion? Okay. No further discussion. I'll call for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'm not prepared to try to re-engineer this thing through conditions, and they didn't show enough interest to come down here to be asked questions. And I got nothing. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.